For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly. I own Dog Kind, and I specialize in very fearful, feral dogs, uh, puppy mill rescues, dogs who are afraid of just about everything. And relaxation is something that can be kind of hard to come by for these dogs. And so today I want to talk about some ways to promote relaxation uh, within a safe space for your dog. Helping your dog relax in their safe space. Who is this for? This is for you if you want to make a safe space for your dog, but you're not sure how to teach them to use it. Or maybe you've already created one, but your dog doesn't like it. They don't use it or they don't really relax there. What is a safe space? A safe space is a comfortable area where your dog can retreat to when they are stressed or someplace they just go to relax and enjoy themselves. It is often something enclosed like a crate or a pen or a room. And it's particularly useful for dogs who are afraid of family members or maybe of visitors or noises, that kind of thing. Here's one example photo of a safe space. This is Pancake Safe Space uh, a few years ago now. You can see he has a crate there and he has toys and beds and outdoor access, which I know isn't always possible, but for him was helpful to have. And here's another space, safe space he had um, in the house we're in now. And again, he's got hiding places and lots of comforts and ways to entertain himself. So how can we increase the odds that our dog will actually relax in a safe space that we make for them? First, you absolutely need to make sure that the safe space is something that your dog will like to some degree in terms of the location and sort of the setup and the the features and the items you put in the safe space. So think about where your dog currently chooses to rest and what, if anything, you can think of details that are, are common to places that they do choose to rest. It might be particular types of surfaces or bedding, heat or cold. For example, here's that photo again of Pancake's safe space a few years ago. And he really liked this bed here on the right. It's kind of a, a round bed with sides, and he really liked it, uh, but he mostly used it at night when everyone was already asleep and it was quiet in the house, at least early on. He really wanted to hide. He liked to be hidden from view of someone who was coming into the room, so he did spend quite a bit of time in that crate he's going into in this photo. And so one thing I did when paying attention to his preferences and where he preferred to rest is said, okay, he likes this bed, but he also wants to be hidden. So I took it and moved it behind the crate so that he could use the bed and be hidden. So um, there he is using the bed more often than in the daytime um, when it was hidden behind the crate so he could be a bit more protected from, uh, from view. How to make the safe space a relaxing place number two. This is so important and really common mistakes I see uh, all the time. Let your dog choose whether to go in or to come out, if at all possible. And don't um, close them in if it will bother them. So don't force your dog in. Don't push them in. Don't reach in and pull them out for sure. And if you know that they will become anxious if they're confined, do not close the door, at least early on in training. Uh, the reason for this is that the whole point of the safe space is to have a place where you have set things up to encourage your dog to feel safe and relax. And doing any of these things tells your dog that this safe space is demonstrably not safe, right? If they go into their quote unquote safe space and you reach in and pull them out, it's not safe for them. So it's really counterproductive to do any of these things, to use any kind of force uh, around the safe space. And number three, how to make the space, the safe space a relaxing place. This is something that takes a little more uh, observation and thought, but is really important. Add items, activities, or any kind of environmental cues that your dog already associates with relaxation or with napping, and incorporate those into the safe space and into your safe space training. For example, where does your dog usually nap and what, what are all the things that are part of that context? Again, could be particular beds, time of day, location. What tells your dog that nothing interesting is going to happen right now and or nothing scary is going to happen right now? For instance, one of my students in the Confidence Building for Dogs course uh, last round, 
Her dog, she noticed her dog tended to relax and nap when she was on Zoom calls, and she wanted to work on conditioning a, a new safe space and have her dog relax there, and so she took her laptop upstairs and sat next to that new safe space when she had Zoom calls for a while as part of the training. Just to get your creative juices flowing, here are some of Pancake's what I call sleepy triggers, so things that I notice seem to promote sleepiness and relaxation for him. If I am on a laptop, whether I'm like right now, I'm talking on um, and I'm on video and he's chilled out behind me, um, classical music or the voice on my yoga app are both things that I don't think they're naturally relaxing for him, but they are predictors that nothing, I'm not going to do anything to him or with him, nothing's going to happen for him. Uh, classical music, because I used to do some ballet classes to some quiet piano music, and when that came on, or now when the yoga app voice, the woman on the yoga app starts speaking, he curls up and goes to sleep. Other important things for him that can help in the, when it's cooler, at least in the winter, his heated bed definitely encourages sleepiness. He's sleepier when he has just been on a hike and we've just come home. Or if he just did something else kind of strenuous, like a long enrichment game. So when I want to try to encourage him to rest or nap, especially if I'm trying to encourage him to do so in a particular location, I might incorporate as many of these things as I can, like sit next to it, be on my laptop, have classical music playing, have his heated bed, practice right after a hike, that kind of thing. And that can um, really help you get your dog to start napping and relaxing in that space that you want to condition as a relaxation space. So your action steps, if you decide to take the plunge and work on encouraging your dog to relax in a particular area, take some time to observe when and where your dog is the most relaxed, where they nap. Make a list of all the factors associated with relaxation or napping, and I hope I gave you some good ideas in the last few slides. And then incorporate as many of those as possible into both the design of the relaxation space, the safe space, and also in your training. Like I mentioned with Pancake, if I want him to, when I wanted to train him to relax in his crate, some things I did um, were to incorporate things like me being on a call or on my laptop while sitting next to the crate, having him go into his crate right after a hike when he was already sleepy or, or tired. Those can really um, help your training progress. Don't forget to get your free guide if you don't already have it, Caring for Your Fearful Dog at dogkindtraining.com care.